to Silly Wee Films, Silly Wee Sessions. I'm Professor Cool, founder of Silly Wee Films since 2006 to now. I'm joined by a long time collaborator, Mark Harvey, actor. <laughs> but basically, um, since Mark is here and I have a camera, I figured we'd just do a little one on one about your time in the industry. All right. <laughs> when did you start acting? Uh, 2000. No, oh, that's. Yeah, <laughs> 2003. 2003. 2000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus came down and said. At the time of the crab horseshoe, whatever it's called. Crab shoe or What well, is a crab? Horseshoe crab, that's what it's called. So you started in 2000 and all. 2003. 2003. And you have, how old were you then? 20. No, nine, 18, 19. Because you're 29 now. Yes. You're my age. 19, 20. So you're 23? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 26, 27, 28. 29. I was 19. So you're 19, good, which means I was 19 when I met you. So uh, I started um, I started college in 2003. Did a little stint at the BBC before then in the training programme E Force. Right. Yeah, I did, I did six months in the training programme. Basically, I was at the job centre for a really long time <laughs> because I was unemployable. And Eight I, years I've known this guy, I've not, not heard this long. I was, I was unemployed for so long. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was completely befundled. In 2003? 2003. But then 2002, 2003. No, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. So I came out of college. Uh, and I was, yeah, I, I came out of school. Did a did a, a computing course at Reed Care College. Did the NC. Finished it. Me and my friend Andrew finished it before everyone else. Because it was <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was an engine course. It was ridiculously easy for geeks like us who were on computers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, left it because we got into the second year of the HNC and they said, well, for the first four weeks we're going to teach you how to use a printer. <laughs> and I was like, well, see you later. <laughs> that was, and that was, <laughs> it's, it's not working. There's, a, there's an on switch on the printer. Huh? Um, so I did a stint there and I left, went to Canada for a while. And by a while, I mean 11 days. And... I did not... So I was going to the job centre signing on, signing on, can get anything, can get anything. Got the prospectus. This isn't it, but this is a demonstration. Got the prospectus of. For those who don't know what a prospectus, prospectus is, is. <laughs> it is an actual noun. Something you can touch and hold. Uh, got a prospectus, and I feel we should have some music on Got a prospectus. This is your life. It's all about ex conference. So, got a, got a prospectus, went through the book of everything that you could do, and TV production came up. And I was like, oh, I could have a writing, and I did. I had a really crazy imagination, and I would write random stories, and I was like, how cool would it be if I could take what's in here and turn it into a film? I thought that'd be really cool. So I applied... It's still 2003. So 2002, 2003. So I applied for the HN, <laughs> the HND Television Operation and Production course at James Watt College. Even though I didn't, I didn't know, I thought I applied for the entry course. But I didn't. I applied for the HND, but I didn't have a higher in English, and that was a requirement because I left before I did my hires. And people in England won't know what they are. No matter so, what, this is sound better than my education. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here shaking my head like. Oh. So I emailed the lecturer, the head, the senior lecturer, Stuart McCorkendale, and I said to him, "I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to apply for that one. I didn't know. Can I apply for the NC instead?" And he went, "Oh, come along anyway." Hmm. Uh, I wrote a script the night before for a short film, right. <laughs> which you wouldn't do now. I made up a trailer of a film that didn't exist, but I took clips from like Highlander 4 trailers and Mission to Mars and Mortal Kombat, right. and I cut together a trailer. I don't know if the if this exists anywhere. I was going to ask that. Was my if this is some... It might, I have a theory I know where it is, and I'll dig it out. Right. And I went there, and I handed him everything, and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to make a film. I write scripts. I didn't. <laughs> I write scripts that I can afford to make. And he said, don't make films you can afford to make. Make films you want to make. <sighs> right? So, ah. <laughs> so, Fraser and the cat goes to the moon. Yes. Um, so, I got on the course. I got an unconditional. And I got on the course. So, I did, I did it for a year and a bit. And then I left the course because, unfortunately, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. We weren't making short films, so I wasn't really learning. So I left, started up Sylvie Films, and mm -hmm. did a couple of short films. And Bottle. Then, uh, Bottle was the first one that I did. Uh, second one I did, I did Night is Day, Dusk. That's right. Um, which was about Jason McKenzie, a superhero in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And then I proceeded to spend the rest of my life making Night is Day. Uh, <laughs> uh, Life so far. It haunts me. 
Um, did that, and then um, did uh, yeah, and then I wrote a film called The Journey, which was a sword fighting film, that. and I put out a casting notice, and that's <laughs> when I met you. Hello. And I met you in Cafe Nero, Cafe Nero, across the road from Queen Street. Across from Queen Street. And you came in. It was a brisk summer's day. You came in. I was it just me and you at the time, or was it Alan? Oh no, we had Alan. Oh, was it just me, you and oh, me, you, Alan, and a guy, another guy, who I, we'll he, keep him nameless for now. And everyone was great, and I think I just hired you all on the spot. Didn't have a budget, didn't have money, didn't have a clue. I didn't read anything, did I? Um, the film fell apart because. There wasn't enough money or support behind it. Uh, definitely support was the main thing. I got run down by a car and broke my leg. So I've got a pin from here to here. So the film fell apart. And then I was like, well, this is ridiculous. I'm going to make a web series. <laughs> and I took the short film that is like it's date. And I turned it into a web series. But that's how I got started. So what made you... <laughs> this is going to go, Mark Abbey, well, I got started at college. Mark. Uh, college. So why did you want to be an actor? Okay, so... <laughs> I know we should be writing, but we will write. But this is okay. I didn't go... Well, I moved down to England for two years. And whilst I was down there, uh, I was living with my dad. I've told my dad this now, so it's totally fine. I've told everybody. Uh, but whilst I was there at this English school, Wilmer Hill it was called, yeah, I pretty much went to res registration and I was going, uh, Claire, are you here? Yes, yes, yes. Joshua, are you here? Yes. Mark, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay, right, everybody off you go to your class. I didn't go to my class, I went straight home. <laughs> I skied school, skipped school, whatever you want to call it. That's I never went to the school. That's my good. dad was working that's, all the time. I skied school. Did you? Mm -hmm. Didn't like it. There we go. Sorry. No, I didn't like school. I just, I never picked up anything from it. Oh, I point. didn't go to school. Uh, I went home. My dad was working a lot. Sometimes he'd be away from the house for a week or two weeks, sort of thing. So there was nobody home except for me. And all I would do, watch movies all the time. I would just be, or I would go to London and I would go see a play. I would go see mm. the theatre or that, uh, the matinee sort of thing. And I would have dinner because my dad left me loads of money. Uh, to survive on through the week, which I budgeted, I ate a lot of cheap foods and stuff, but I saved most of the money so that I could go to London and have a meal and go see a show. Mm. Uh, so my education was trying to Peter, beat the education system <laughs> uh, and watch entertainment. But I learned a lot from movies. That's I've learned a lot from music from movies. I love my film music, etc. I've studied that. As in, When I say study, I mean I've just watched it so intensely and had my own thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, and created stuff from film music, watching other films, la da 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 da. Yeah, so I wanted to do acting because, well, that's kind of the link up is because I loved going home and watching films all the times, and I loved the film music, and it was from doing that all the time, pretty much lazing about in a sense. Uh, but I've always been a film fanatic, and it was just from going, hey, actually, I am a film fanatic, and I. I will sky school to study films by actually watching the works and the making of as well. So I thought I want to do acting, but not only that, I want to do writing, I want to do music, uh, compose music for them, I want to direct, I want to, uh, uh, the whole thing. So yeah, I'll start off with acting though since that seems to be the easiest one and since I don't have the qualifications etc. Even though I did pass my English exam. Did 
Did I tell you about that as well? <laughs> I went to school one time when I wasn't skiving. I didn't story. know my... No, it's not a long <laughs> one. I went to my GCSEs. Yeah, we, yeah. And I, I walked into school going, well, I'll just stick about today and see what happens. And it was a test that was going on, an exam. GCSEs didn't know they were going on. I missed all the other ones. But I went into that and I passed my English exam because... It was on Lord of the Flies. Oh, and you just watched the And I before. recently <laughs> just watched the film. And it was questions like, what is the significance of the conch, which is the shell? And I knew that from watching the film. And I passed my English exam by watching the film, not by reading the book. So, uh, you went, you did two years in the school in England and you didn't like it. So you spent most of your time watching, watching films, films or going to the theatre. Which is where I realised that I my strengths lie within films. So then you decided that you wanted to be an actor and a writer, but you figured that you'd be an actor first. So what was your first ever first thing acting job? Was I went to see a show, Fiddler on the Roof, amateur production of... There's uh, a Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Sounds crazy. No. Um, and it was by a company called Falkirk Bohemians in Falkirk. Which, uh, <laughs> which I thought was very appropriate. Uh, and it was such a good production, I loved it. And the Topol, the... Etc. It was so good, and I thought the, the sets were brilliant. For an amateur production, I need to be the part of this company. So the next show they were doing was uh, Anything Goes, it was called. Anything Goes. All based on Cole Porter songs and stuff. So no, uh, I went for, I just walked in to the thing, so everybody was just uh, singing the chorus songs and that, and the auditions were like three weeks later sort of thing, so I went for the one of the main roles which was Billy, uh, Billy Crocker, uh, and I got the role, I got told straight away that uh, you're I got told that night that I'm going to be playing Billy. How old were you? 19. 19. 19 years old. Uh, and I was completely shaved in the face. <laughs> and so, um, so I was seen in that. Uh, because somebody saw me in Anything Goes, I got a good review saying that Mark Harvey's comic timing was spot on as the irrepressible Billy Crocker was the review. Norma, don't you have something else to clean? I have cleaned everything. The next year, in 2004, that was my next show I ever did, which was Me and My Girl, same company, and I played me, as in Bill, me and my girl, I played me, uh, which was, again, another Bill, and he was a little cockney guy. Um, I had to learn how to tap dance in that, which I found very difficult, but whilst I was doing Me and My Girl, somebody saw me in Anything Goes, which was a Pamela Jarvis, I think it was Anything Goes, or something. I'm sure somebody saw me in one of those shows, and said, do you want to, cameras. I don't know, <laughs> and said, uh, do you want to come and uh, help us out on Return to Forbidden Planet, Ooh. which was on the same year, that was in 2004, and they were wanting me to play the part of Ariel the Robot. Is that Forbidden Planet, the famous Leslie Nielsen? Leslie movie? Nielsen, but yeah. this is the, the comedy spoof the sequel sort of thing. Okay. Which has got all these songs like, you shake my nose and you rattle my brain. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's all that sort of thing. Uh, so I was to play the robot, which was on rollerblades. So whilst I was learning to tap dance, I was also learning how to rollerblade. <laughs> which I up. never done before. I never rollerbladed, I never tap danced. But I was learning in the same year, at the same time, uh, because I was doing rehearsals for Forbidden Planet on a Monday and a Wednesday. And I was doing rehearsals for me and my girl on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So that was four days in a row, but doing different shows, and I was doing tap dancing and then rollerblading. But it came to a point towards <laughs> both shows that I learned how to tap dance in my rollerblades, which which they included in uh, Forbidden Planet, uh, Forbidden Planet sort of thing, uh, which was really cool. So uh, yeah, that was my second and third show in the same year. But um, so you did uh, the theatre, so anything goes, and return to Forbidden Planet. That was in the space of two years. So that was in the, you were 19. So let's flash forward to your first short film. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first short film I ever did was called Seven Inches. <laughs> Back about wee things. So what was, who, who did you play and how did you get that part, first of all? Carry on. Uh, it was, uh, that was, I, just, I can't remember. What I think was? the guy just saw me. 
<laughs> in the street. I really can't remember. Do you no, remember? like, the, again, I think it was just they saw me in something else. I don't remember auditioning for that role. It was just they saw me so in the play or something like that. For me, I, I know, I, I, I just don't audition. <laughs> you think you can just come into my life, mate? Just think I will have my arms open to you and say, you're my father and I'm your son. Well, that ain't happening, mate. Because I ain't no Captain Sparrow. So what was the part in... Seven well, it was the, the lead in what was the this part? Seven Inches about an alcoholic guy. And the Seven Inches is like the, the length of a glass of alcohol. Don't touch that. Uh, <laughs> it's me. Um, uh, so he's an alcoholic and he gets talking with this old guy that they sort of... They both got a homeless guy and they both have these... Sort of, it was actually quite interesting sort of thing. Uh, quite like to the guy's ideas. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it was all in black and white as well, but it was no, my I first film, so there was a lot of heavy duty actoring going on in that. Actoring is when, we've probably already said, I don't know if you've heard it, but Tom Scott puts it right, and I've always thought this, acting is when you... It's the act of acting. Yeah, like, this would be me acting. If this was in the script, this would be how I would say the lines. I'd be talking normally. Probably maybe making hand gestures like that. Um, the key is to memorise the lines so off by heart that you just say them like it's the most normal thing. As if you just tell someone how you're doing. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, But if you're reading from it for the first time, you can't help but go like, uh, invite to cast and crew and da 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 da. You start getting a little flow that's going on. Rob that's not Schneider good. is a stage. Rob Schneider. Schneider. You played an alcoholic, mm -hmm. um, and that's when you were 19, still then ish. 1920 sort of thing. I think I was 20 about then, actually. I decided that I was going to do a web series, and the reason I wanted to do the web series is because I had it in my head that I wasn't waiting for the BBC or whatever to come knocking on my door. <laughs> well, we've heard that you're good. Come and make a programme. Doesn't work that way. Oh, sorry. Knock, knock, knock. Uh, uh, so I was like, I'm going to make a web series. It's going to be amazing. We're going to make it. We're going to put it out there. And then we, you know, it's going to be on, it's going to be out there every month. The enthusiasm month. was there and stuff. Uh, and everyone I met to talk to, but I said, you're never going to do it. And 13 episodes in a feature film later. <laughs> 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 but how did I approach you initially? Can you remember? What, for, for the journey? Day. No, no, for the next day. day. I'm sure it was just a phone call or an email. I just remember that we talked quite a bit. And it was like phone calls and or we'd meet up or yeah. something. What did you think of the character of Stevie? Well Stevie at the time was uh, just It was one ep it was It was just a one episode sort of little character, it wasn't Maybe. I I think it was just kinda like, well I think we can have a role just a tiny role for you. Because I think at that point it was just kinda we were kinda I kinda like hanging out with you, we'll see how it goes from there sort of thing. Well when they fall out. It wasn't even that, it was just kind of a uh well I've got a wee small role for you. Oh thanks very much. But I think it was during the filming of Night is Day when I was playing Stevie that we really sort of bonded even more. I think we called you the Bruce Campbell effect. Yeah. Where the idea was that you were gonna be in absolutely everything that we did. Yesterday. Yeah. And I remember you came and we we were <laughs> Do you remember? You said to me, shaved face or not shaved? And I said to you, no, nah, we'll shave because that'll be fine. And you, you showed up and you looked about 10. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> so the makeup artist had to draw a beard on you, which is very convincing. So many times do we want to shave it off? They go, whoa, no, okay. But Let's get a fake didn't, beard it thing. Didn't be the you had to get the fake beard. Go to the local joke, joke shop. shop. And <laughs> So we did that first episode, I was writing the series as we were going along because I believe that's what you did. Mm. <laughs> because it was like, ah, I need an idea. What was you uh, talking about Night you say the web series? What was, how, what was you, obviously you came in in episode two, mm. we loved you so much that we gave you a cameo in episode three as the guy who chats up the girls at the bar. Yeah, that was funny. That was where it was, I think we were still sort of developing that I'm just going to be this little guy that pops up here and there. And then... Uh, spoiler alert, I kill off Stevie in episode 2, <gasps> but I bring back his twin brother Frank. Frank Stone. Um, I enjoyed that role. The, the assassin. Because I got to play a bad guy for the first time. Because as we've said before, I played a comedy role in Anything Goes. It was a comedy role in Ariel the Robot the from Robot. Forbidden Planet. And then after that, in the same year, it was me and my girl. And it was a comedy role in that. Uh, uh, but the and then Stevie again Stevie funny role 
is just a hammed it up, I made it funny. <coughs> thing with Frank though was that I uh, hammed it up still, but it was cool to sort of channel a bit of a, because I'm always like that, like, uh, kind of Jack Sparrowish really, it's always been Jack Sparrow, even before Jack Sparrow came out sort of thing, it's still kind of been, oh, <laughs> and that sort of funny face, but to play somebody that's the other side of my face, which is down there, and that whole sort of Jack Nicholson thing that's going on, etc. That whole, yeah, it's the side, it's that part, and getting a gun out, etc. I love that look and that, and my wife loves that as well. So how did it, so, but, um, what was it like working on a web series? No, oh, it's great fun. Uh, do you recommend it? I do recommend it in the sense of in Scotland. In Scotland. In Scotland. That was the thing. It was just be going in Scotland. Out. I'll put those online and whoever watches are great, but this is our experiences in Scotland. Yeah. So what was it like See, working on a website? I was on holiday recently in America and it was just going in America, seeing how big the place is and everybody's an actor. You go to America and say you're an actor, it's like, well, who's not? Sort of thing. Uh, everybody's an actor. You come to Scotland, do you say you're an actor? It is like, oh, so do you know him? Do you know this guy? And most likely, I do actually. Everybody seems to know each other. And there's this nice sort of close sort of, we all seem to connect. Almost cliquey, it can if be you bit, will. It can be a bit too cliquey. I, I decided, well, I'm, I may as well finish Night's Day. I may as well come to an end. Because I know I'm the Night's Day guy. And there was, a, there was a time for a long time when I was introduced to parties as, ah, the Night's Day guy. Man, that's getting cool. Oh, was it? Yeah. And it's cool in a way because, yes, that's my baby. And it's, yeah. my, you know, and that's why. The Night's Day guy. Ah, the Night's Day guy. Well, pff, do something else. <laughs> and, um, and I decided to do the feature film because it would wrap it all up. And I did... Uh, Firefly Serenity, where I wrote a story where you didn't need to have seen the series, but if you had seen the series, some things would have made sense. And if you watch the movie and you like it, you can go back. The movie is on night is day.net mm -hmm. um, for 99p. Um, but you can go and watch the web series for free. And there's 13 episodes there, and things link up, but it's not necessary. But how you couldn't do series two because you got a really good opportunity in America. I was in America. Uh, well, you met your wife, and that's completely acceptable. That's where I met my wife. Uh, she wasn't your wife at the time, of course. She had to court and woo her. But you met your wife, your future wife. Um, but then we did the feature film, so how did it feel when I called you up and said, right, this is happening? Oh, that was uh, okay. Cool, because I was in America doing theatre. Uh, and it was the professional theatre sort of thing, so it was like one month, maybe less, of rehearsals, and then a month doing the show sort of thing, so it was just constant theatre, theatre, live audience sort of stuff, and just coming back to Scotland going, there's a film, you could be in a film and you're the bad guy sort of thing of, uh, where it's not that sort of intense, can't mess up a line, you can't, I mean theatre's great, I love a live audience that, but there's something good about going, oh good, I'm in a film where I can learn the lines on that day, sorry, <laughs> but I can do the lines on that day and there's not so much intensity, etc. And if you if you mess up a line, then you just do another take sort of stuff. So what was your favorite? Which we didn't really do. There wasn't a lot of outtakes really for us, <laughs> apart from there's when we're being funny. There's a few, and they mostly involve you. Um, <laughs> so, what was your favorite moment on the feature film? Then? On the feature film, I did the first thing that sticks out in my head. I love the fight. Sean, Sean, Sean Clancy. Sean Clancy. Oh, Sean Clancy. I keep thinking Tom Clancy, that's why. Uh, his, the movements and that, I loved all that, but there's that great shot with the, when, it's just when you capture little moments like that, when you're just improvising with, let's do a camera shot like that, but you, there's stuff that you just well, that can't the, get, the fight with you but there? it's me and Chris. Yeah. And it's the whack whack that I give him, I punch him and I punch him, and as I smack him up in the jaw like that, as his head goes back, the sun shines behind, it's on my showreel. Which Fraser helped to do. But <laughs> it's one of the last shots because it ends on such a punch. But it's when I hit him, it ends on a punch. his head goes back and the sun shines and covers over the there. Like I've just gone, oh! I just love that sort of, is it guerrilla filming, you call it, or something where you're just like, I don't know what we're doing, there's no storyboard, there's no nothing, it's just what are we going to do? Gonna On top of that, it wasn't dialogue, it was a fight. That's going to go on my gravestone, Chris I didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs>
So we did Night is Day and it premiered at the Glasgow Film Festival in 2011. That was your second premiere because you did Kirk beforehand. Uh, yes. Um, which you did with Mike Fairs. And I, from what I can tell you, had a, a fairly enjoyable time. Oh, I love that. That was great. But that that's not about me, so I don't want to know. But what was uh, what was it like being at the <laughs> sorry? What was it like being at the premiere for a, the film that, for Night's Day? For Night's Day, uh, that was one cold. <laughs> it was February. It was, it was cold. I remember. Um, drink, I remember drinking a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember that. Probably because I was drunk. But uh, the. What's it called? There, there's just something about the people. Again, it's just a Scottish thing. It's just with Scottish people. They're so friendly and everybody knows each other. I'm going there and I'm reckoning... This is the thing. Is though I'm terrible at remembering people's names. Mm-hmm, I'm, so I'm absolutely... Really? You seem to remember lots of people. I fuck it. But I'm just... I, I do it as well. I just go like, hey mate, because I'm mostly known for being funny... You're probably now that you, if you ever watch this, you know you know if I don't say you by name, it's because I've forgotten your name. But it's not that I don't care. It's just um, I really am terrible with names. In fifteen words or less, what, <laughs> advice, what advice do you have for anybody who is either an actor now or wants to be an actor? Fifteen words or less. I really can't do it in fifteen words or less. Okay, twenty words or less. It's if you do go to school. Don't depend on their training. Uh, depend on your skill. Only go to the school for the, the contacts. All right. No, okay. not even basics. Because acting, you can't be trained on acting. It's your own personal stuff. They will maybe say, well, we're going to try and bring that out of you. If you need it brought out of you, then you're a... F- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, so that's all they can do, and you're paying a lot of money to do that. But you need to go to these schools to get contacts. I never knew what Spotlight was until this year, 2013. We've had a few tweets into the Celebi Film Celebi sessions since we've been on the air. And um, from Dead Not Sleeping, uh, would like you, he says, Hi Mark, big fan. And he would like to know if you would very kindly give him a verse of the Ultimate Showdown. Right now. Yeah. Oh, Godzilla was hopping around. Tokyo City like a big playground. When suddenly Batman burst from the shade and hit Godzilla with a bad grenade. Godzilla got kicked but began to attack. Well, Godzilla, I fucking don't know that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, we've got a tweet from. Uh, uh, Stevie forever and uh, Stevie spelled PH would like it if you could do a Captain Jack Sparrow impression. One second, Ron. First of all, possibly had enough. The great thing about Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, yeah. The great thing about Captain Jack Sparrow. Is that he's drunk from the head down, or from the down up to the head down. Something along those lines. But his legs are sober. And as it goes further up, his hands are most drunk. And his head is the most drunk of them all. So when he speaks, the hands speak first. They will confirm what he is thinking. Right? Mark, thank you very much for being the one and only guest of the Silly Bee Films. I'm afraid it's too late, man. I'm stuck like this for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, I would say a big round of applause for Mark Carver, but it's just yeah. me, so I'll give him a round of applause. Uh, thanks for not watching, and um, good.